Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we're going to be swatching out all of my Lisa Eldridge luxuriously lucent and insanely saturated lip colors. <laughs> Welcome to everyone watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to be swatching out all of the luxuriously lucents that I have by Lisa Eldridge and all of the insanely saturated that I have by the brand. Now this front row we will not be swatching because those are uh, velvets, so that's gonna be another video. I'm still missing a few of those shades, but I can tell you that I have all the shades from the range that are in these two formulas, and I thought I could group them together because together they make a very nice family. So let me get to these swatches. But before we get to these swatches, I have to point out that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, and this greatly skews my makeup preferences and how I feel about makeup in general. And if you are if you are unfamiliar with the channel, it may be good to know that I have been a makeup reviewer for more than a decade. I focus mainly on eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of your makeup. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then please consider subscribing and joining my Snow Angel family. So my love for the Lisa Eldridge lipstick range has been well documented on this channel and over on my blog. Um, I first fell in love with the True Velvets, then she came out with these other formulas and I love them as well. So that's why I wanted to come on here now that I, now that I own all of these shades to throw them on and show you all of these shades. I will link any other videos and blog posts that I have with these down below. So if you don't wanna watch the entire video and you just wanna like see some quick swatches, then for many of these you can already do that because I already filmed with these in the past. Um, so we're first gonna be doing the Luxuriously Lucents and then the Insanely Saturated, simply because the Luxuriously Lucents have a uh, slightly lighter level of pigmentation. So they're gonna be easiest to take off and then we're gonna build up from lightest to darkest as we go along. So this first shade is Le Mépris, and this shade from the Luxuriously Lucent line is one I didn't buy initially. I bought it to complete the collection, and I'm not sure how much I will be wearing this um, because this is not my shade. It's like a light peachy beige nude, and I have fair skin with pretty pigmented lips, so this usually makes me like dead. But I have found with a lot of Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, even the shades that I don't necessarily gravitate towards, can be okay with certain looks. So let me see what this one looks like on. So here is what Le Mépris looks like on me. It adds a little bit of warmth. It just doesn't do quite enough for me to really love it on myself. The next shade is Je Ne Sais Quoi, and this has been a surprise to me. This is another one I had initially skipped out on, just like Le Mépris, but these lighter colors seem to be everyone's favorite. But now that I have had it in, it's got a pinkier base than Le Mépris, which is why it actually works for me. So let me throw this one on. So on me, this pulls like a very soft, corally pink, which I think is very pretty against my skin tone, especially for this time of year. Um, I've been wearing a lot of like bluish green eye looks in the past couple of weeks, and it goes really perfectly with that. I think it goes really nicely with the dress I'm wearing. It just gives a really nice juxtaposition with certain looks, but I do feel it's got too much of a warm undertone for me to really love this for the everyday. But for the spring summer season, this is what I'm gonna be whipping out a lot. One of the older lipsticks in this lineup is Kitten Mischief, and this is one that I've worn a lot. Again, one that was a little bit unexpected for me to love it as much as I did. It's a great nude on me. So here is Kitten Mischief, and as you can see, this just livens up my face just enough, but it still goes with lots of different things. It's got a slightly warmer undertone, which is why I thought I wasn't going to love it, but I have found this a very universal shade that I can throw on with any look I wear, really, and it will look fine. So this is a really good staple. If you get just one nude, I think this is the best one in the line. The next shade I have for you is Dance Card, and this is a true, true, straight up coral. Not necessarily my shade, but still a very pretty option if you do like a coral lip. And here is Dance Card. As you can see, it's just a little bit on, a, like, a little off on me. It's not 
terrible. I'm gonna be very honest here, but I can definitely see like a purple knit, like a purple hint coming through through the lipstick and I don't love it when lipsticks do that for me and that just means that it's too much of a clash with my natural lip color for it to really go on opaque. Maybe if you have uh, not as strong as a cool undertone in your lips, this may be a lot prettier on you even if you have fair skin, but I think this is better for people with like slightly deeper, medium, olive skin tones. I think this shade is going to be a lot prettier on me. This is the shade Rosy Shell, and it's quite possibly one of the most cool toned options that Lisa Eldridge has to offer in any of her lipstick ranges. Quite a lot of it is quite warm toned, but this is actually described as a blue tone pink. So as you can see here, the shade Rosy Shell is just a little bit better for me than something like Dan's card is because it has that cooler undertone. That cool undertone, because it goes much better with my lip color, it looks so much more flattering, even though this is one of the lighter shades that is an offer in the range. Again, I think it's really pretty with the cl like clashing with this minty, sagey green dress that I'm wearing today. Now, before you think we're going a lot darker than we just did, we kind of are, but because the Luxuriously Lucens have a sheer but buildable formula, the shade Painterly actually isn't as intense as you might think. It's like a nude, muted reddish tone with a bit of brown, so it can work as a nude, but it will give you a little bit more color than something like Kitten Mischief will. And here we have what Painterly looks like. I think it looks really pretty on me. It's definitely more of a fall shade for me. This is when I go for these more like warmish, brownish, red kind of shade, but it looks very neutral on me, which is why I love it. And I picked it up the minute these launched. Here is Meet Me in Berlin, and Meet Me in Berlin is the deeper version, like more, more brown toned than Painterly is. So if you wanna go for that chocolatey brown, but without it having like the level of intensity of a Velvet Decade, then this can be really nice. It's got a very nice hydrating formula, like all of these have, and this is just a really stunning shade, and it's a little bit more unusual. And this is Meet Me in Berlin, definitely more of a spicy vibe. I think this lipstick is particularly pretty if you pair it with like a brown toned lip liner. Now I'm not a lip liner kind of girl, but if that's something you like to look the look of, then this can give you that 90s brown lip very easily. I love this because I do have brown eyes and because I have that depth in my hair color, I feel it goes with it really nicely. And this with some more jewel toned in, uh, jewel tones in my outfit in the fall season is incredibly pretty. Next up is Spirited Away, and this is one that, again, I bought a little bit later because I felt that on initial launch, Painterly appealed to be more than this one did, but this is also really pretty, but it's perhaps a little bit more warm tone than Painterly. It's not as neutral. So here is Spirited Away, and I think I prefer Painterly just a little bit more on myself than I do this one. It's still very pretty, but it's perhaps a little too similar to Painterly to own both if you were doubting between the two. Um, depending on your undertone, I think if you have a warmer undertone, this can look a bit rosier on you than it does on me, because here again, I can see some of that purpleiness that I've got in my lips coming through, which means that this color isn't quite right for me. And next up is Rose Official, and there are a couple of really beautiful pinky tones in the Luxuriously Lucent. I keep reaching for these in the spring summer season. Um, this, as well as one of the other shades coming up, I just adore. So here we have Rose Official, and as you can see, there's just something about this lipstick that plays really well with the cool undertone in my lips. I normally don't love rosy tones on myself because they have a lot of warmth, and they very often just look a little bit weird, but this is that perfect rosy pink that I think can be really pretty on a lot of different people, but especially if you have a cooler undertone, I think this is one of the best things that Lisa Eldridge does in her line. And just so we can really see the juxtaposition between Rose Official and Love of My Life, I'm swatching Love of My Life next. Another shade that I initially passed up on because I just knew I didn't love pinks, but this has made me fall in love with pink lipstick and I wore it so much in May and I'm super excited to be wearing this a lot more in June.
So here is Love of My Life, and I hope you can see why I love this so much. It adds a pop of brightness, but without it being overly bright. I mean, is it this one? I also have Velvet Carnival from the Velvet line, and I wore this the other day, but you can just see that this is far more fuchsia and almost purple leaning, whereas this is more of a true, true pink. And like roses, pink shades are not my favorite. So that's why I initially passed up on this when this first launched. I didn't get it. I was glad she brought it back. And now I'm super happy that I own this because this has just rekindled my love for pink lipstick, you guys. There are another two shades in the line that I wanna show you back to back because they're quite similar and I can imagine that you're doubting between the two. This is Atomic Cherry. And this is a shade I initially bought because I thought this was going to do what the other shade that I'm gonna show you next is actually doing. So Atomic Cherry is described as a cherry red, but I find this pool's pretty orange on me. Let me show you. So for a shade called Cherry, I don't find this really embodies the Cherry vibe. It just pulls a little bit more orange. And I was hoping that this could be that fun, like popsicle watermelon pink, like this pinkish tone red that I love wearing in the summertime. But this doesn't quite deliver. It's in, in fact a little bit patchy. Again, the shade doesn't go very well with the undertone of my lips. So I can even see the purpley tone coming on uh, through in the top lip, which if that happens, I know it's not quite the shade for me. Will I still be wearing this? Sometimes for sure there are going to be days, but the next one is my favorite of the two. And that shade would be Wonder Wheel. When this launched, I knew this is going to be that pinky toned watermelon reddish popsicle shade that looks like you've just e eaten a bit of ripe fruit and it just kind of stains your lips. This is so pretty for the summertime. And there is Wonder Wheel. It perhaps looks a little bit coral, but it's got a much stronger pinky undertone. And again, for the summer season, this is exactly that kind of shade that I like. I like the sheerness. I love the hydrating formula. This in like July, August is definitely going to make an appearance in a Shop My Stash. And then we're finishing off the luxuriously loosened section of this video with two shades that I didn't initially buy when these first launched last year um, because I would not wear a red and a very deep color in this more like, um, like more creamy formula, you could say. This is a shade Palazzo, it's stunning, but I want my reds to be matte, I'm sorry. So here's Palazzo and it's a gorgeous red shade. It does have a warmer undertone, but I think this looks so stunning. I know, I know, if I put on a red, it always is going to look pretty cool on me. I know, I just, I don't know. There's something in my skin tone that just really loves a red. Um, so this looks cool, but this creamy texture, it can like, I don't, I wouldn't say these bleed, but with like the lighter shades and the brighter shades this line has to offer, I feel I don't mind it if it gets a little bit outside of my lip line, but with shades like this, I just like a little bit more precision and that's just not what you're gonna get with this lipstick. And finally, Night Thoughts, which is a really stunning deep like blackberry shade, but as dark as this looks in the bullet, a bit like Meet Me in Berlin and Painterly, this is not as intense going on because it has that sheer to buildable formula. This I think is one that you really need to wear with a lip liner if you wanna wear it, um, because you won't get the precision out of this lipstick and it's quite a dark shade. So here we have Night Thoughts and the shade is absolutely stunning, but like Palazzo, I wouldn't wear anything this deep in this kind of formula. It's a really stunning berry shade that I think will be really pretty in the fall season for sure. Um, or if you just have a darker skin tone, this can be a really, really cool shade on you. I think for anyone with deep skin, this is going to be like the shade. Um, it's got a bit of warmth, a bit of a cool tone, like purpliness to it, but not too much. It's got a really nice balance. So this is a stunning, stunning lipstick for sure, but I don't think I'll be wearing it a whole lot. And now it's time to move on to the um, insanely saturated formula. So these are intense pigmentation, but I do find that these, especially the brighter options that I have, and there are more bright tones in this lineup than this nude, 
um, that they do kind of like bleed on the edge of my lips if I wear them for a full day. They can look a little bit blurred after a few hours. Again, something you can very easily solve with a lip liner or um, by just touching up your lipstick really and like just giving it like a little bit of a wipe with your fingers that works pretty fine. This is Sunday Matinee, which was a limited edition shade, I believe. I'm not sure when this launched or if this is still available, but it's the more nude toned option. And I really just bought this to have the full set. This is not my shade. Here's Sunday Matinee, and I think it's too similar to things that are already in the Luxuriously Lucent line. Things like Dance Card and Kitten Mischief and those kind of shades, um, Je ne sais quoi, are just really close to it. And I think I prefer the Luxuriously Lucent formula for those kind of shades more so than I do this. But if you're looking for a very highly pigmented lipstick in this like nudie coral shade, this is stunning and it's going to pull on like it's going to pull out the cool tones in your undertone if you have a cooler undertone and it's go going to pull on the warmer tones if you have a warm undertone so it's very universally flattering next up is rainbow spill and this was actually one that was brought back together with the next shade i'll be showing you because these were unavailable for a long time but then they were actually put back into the lineup so i think you can still get this Here is Rainbow Spill, a very nice, fun, bright pop of color. It's almost a neon, but not quite, but it does have a very strong white base, so that has to be something you're very aware of. This is not perfect, because again, my natural lip color comes through quite a, bit, quite a bit, but for that fun, bright pop of something, I do really like this lipstick. Next up is my favorite of the two that initially launched in this insanely saturated formula. This is Skyscraper Rose. This is one of the best bright pinks in my entire lipstick collection. This is so fun, so bright, so vibrant, and it really livens up my face. That's why I love it. It's definitely packing a punch. It's that really nice bright pop of color. This is not for the faint of heart, but boy, do I love it. And finally, the other two lipsticks that were launched together with Sunday Matinee. First up, New Wave, which looks very purple in the tube, but it actually pulls more like a bright pink once it's on the lips. And here is New Wave. It's so, so stunning. I, again, love wearing this when I wear something like a green top. I was wearing it the other day to work and I absolutely loved it. A very neutral eye is what you're gonna have to wear with this because else it's just gonna distract from everything. And I think I like this even better than Skyscraper Rose on me because it is so cool toned. It looks a little bit more purple on me, but I think if you have a warmer undertone, this can actually be even more of a clash and it can look even more purple. So depending on what you like, but I really love this one. But last but not least, a neon red. This is Strawberry Shock. What else can I say? If you're looking for that really nice, fun, bright summer lipstick, this would be it. It's summer in a lipstick. I love it. It's perhaps a little bit more orange tone than I would love for this kind of vibe. I think if it had a little bit more pink, it would be even better for me. From this insanely saturated Skyscraper Rose and New Wave are definitely my favorites but I love the look of this one as well. And this is what I'm going to be wearing for the rest of the day. There you have it, all of my Lisa Eldridge luxuriously loosened and insanely saturated lipstick swatches. I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I come on here several times a week. I do lots of lip swatch videos. And yes, if I ever am able to complete my true velvet collection, because I'm still missing four or five, I will be updating you with a lip swatch video of those, of course. So you can look forward to more lip swatch videos in the future. And then I would like to thank you so very much for joining me today. And I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.